Hello, everybody. This is April Stutzman. We got another episode here for you of Glory Stories. I'm so excited to be interviewing this special guest today to talk about the glory of God, some of the first times they experienced the presence of God, how they cultivated the presence of God, and different stories that impacted their life, whether it was transformation into glory, miracles that happened, and I want you to be a part part of what this guest has to say, how they have experienced the heart of God in his presence so that you, my friend, can enjoy their story and see how you too can experience the glory and the presence of God in your everyday life. So I'd like to welcome my special guest that I'm interviewing. Let me just get the sound going. All right. Can you hear me? Oh, yay, we are live. Yes. Yes. Hey, everybody, we are live. All right. I got a few people logging in. Hey, Jody, we're just adjusting the screen real quick. Hey, Kenneth, how are you? Can everybody hear us well? Thank you, Lord. Hey, Donna. I'm so excited about this. What a powerful Amen. testimony Danny has. <laughs> you people, I'm going to let a few people continue to log in. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hey, family. Yes, oh, we just can't wait to you. pray over you guys. I can't wait for you to hear <coughs> Danny's testimony. It's so powerful. Yeah. Sounds great. Good. Everybody says that it's sounding good and the screen's good. So we'll start in just a few seconds. Spirit. We're just inviting the presence. So Lord, we just come together in unity while people are logging in. And we just yeah. ask that you just find any distraction. Lord, that you just help people just to, to hear the truth of your word today. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I just thank you that your presence, your presence, Jesus, that you are high and lifted up. We just Amen. exalt you with us on this broadcast. And we just ask that your presence just wash ever everybody. Amen. It's been a, a refreshing this afternoon as as we as I get ready to introduce Danny. I just I just ask you to just ask the Lord to speak to you during this broadcast because she's going to share some amazing things that God has done in her life. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, I just want to introduce you, Danny. I I just I know nobody. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, titles are important for assignment and you're such an apostolic woman. It just reveals mm-hmm. assignment, you know, <laughs> and I just am so amazed at the places that God has sent you and the prayer assignments that he's given you in this season and your testimony. It's so powerful. Yeah. So I just want to yeah. thank you so much for <laughs> coming on here as, as God is, is birthing this, this beautiful apostolic call in your life. And it's uh, been amazing to, to see how you've just grown and got touch, we've touched base here and there, but to dive in and hear more about you and your story. So I just want you to Thank share you. with with everybody um, how you experienced the glory, the first time in your life that you experienced the glory. Thank you for having me, April. I'm honored uh, to be on. Um, the first time I experienced the glory, let me give you a little backup story. Um, I was raised in a Christian home and I was uh, saved and baptized um, at the age of 11. Wow. So I grew up in a Christian home. So I, I, I would say the glory, I first experienced the weightiness of God's presence um, when I was uh, went up and confessed to Jesus um, and repented uh, when I was 11. Uh, at a revival at my church. Yeah. And, um, so, uh, as time went on, um, I was really, um, I was really on fire for the Lord as an 11 year old. I even remember going home and like making a list and calling people and inviting them to church and, and things like that. And as time progressed, um, life happened Hmm. and the environment that I, uh, the church environment that I grew up in, um, did not, 
um, teach on the gifts of the spirit. Mm. And um, so I didn't really, I never really learned about the gifts of the spirit and uh, the Holy Spirit. Yes, we believed in the Trinity, but it just wasn't really talked about. Yeah. And um, so then um, I uh, moved on, went to college, did my thing and kind of veered off on my own path because um, I was saved and baptized, right? Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I was going to heaven. So I, I did as what many do and I veered off on the wrong path. And um, um, I got, I got in uh, to some relationships that weren't from God and it was just one thing after another. The life was good for a while. And um, um, I was doing things my own way because we can always do things our own way because we know best, right? That's what we think. <laughs> I can relate that's what, to that on here. <laughs> that season when we were younger, right? <laughs> that's, that's what we think. And yeah. I got married. Um, and I, I was in a physically abusive relationship. And so I was in that for a few years. I got out of that. And there's so many details. Um, I ended up, you know, years later, I remarried. And that relationship um, went spiral down as well. So I've um, been through two divorces. I've been divorced for quite a while. And um, after that, um, you know, I'd been in other relationships uh, that I didn't get married, but it was just, I was trying to fill my heart. Come on. I was trying to fill my heart, even though I had met Jesus at 11 years old and knew who he was. I, I was looking everywhere, but Jesus everywhere. And, um, whether it be, you know, in my job, I was successful in my job, uh, traveling all over the United States, um, worked in the pharmaceutical industry, um, you know, making the, making the big bucks, that type of thing, all the worldly things that yeah. really, they didn't make, make a difference at all. So, um, but that's what I found my identity and purpose in. And then as a relationship after relationship kept breaking down, then it just is just a series of subsequent events that occurred that um, uh, my parents passed away. Um, my dad actually passed away. I thought he was at a pretty young age and, and um, that just really took hold of me. And I had some friends that passed away and, um, it just seemed like everything came crashing down. And um, um, so I just, I began to, um, I was never a big drinker. Um, you know, even when I was married, I wasn't a big drinker. Um, we would maybe have a glass of wine for dinner or we might go out for a couple of drinks every now and then. But I don't recall that, that, um, that we really kept you know, alcohol in the house. It wasn't like our thing to do. It wasn't something we, we did. And I was just never a really big drinker. But as I, as all of these things started crashing down on me, um, I be, yeah, I became very lonely, mm. very isolated. And of course that's right where the enemy wants us. Come on. And, um, and it's kind of interesting how my even even my how my drinking started because I didn't just like start going out and buying alcohol and just like start pouring you know the vodka or anything like that. I started by being very lonely after work. I was living in Dallas, Texas at the time. I would leave work and just to find some type of um, a community, I would go to the local Applebee's or the local Chili's and that way I didn't have to have dinner by myself. I could sit at the bar and mm -hmm. I could drink, I could have a drink. And, and little did I know mm -hmm. that all the people at the bar were regulars. 
I didn't know that was a thing. I mean, you see it on Cheers, but you don't really know. You don't really know. Yeah, you don't know it's a thing. So I, I became um, in kind of in that community. And so it became not just a once or twice or three times a week. It became an every afternoon thing after work and then on the weekend. And then I would get invited to, oh, let's go to this club and let's go. And so it just one thing led to another. I was just gradually spiraling out of control. Um, in 2008, I, uh, in Dallas, I was arrested for uh, VWI. And um, that, I would say that woke me up. It did wake me up, but it didn't really keep me from drinking. And I went through all the probation, all the costs, all of the, um, just everything you have to do to, um, survive. I was just in survival mode. Mm -hmm. I was working and doing probation. Probation is like a a full-time job. And so I was just in survival mode. I didn't tell anybody. I only told my closest drinking buddies. Um, because they had had DWIs too. And I didn't tell my family. Uh, of course, my dad was already deceased and I didn't tell my brothers. I didn't tell anybody. Of course, they know now, but at the time I didn't tell anybody and I was making decent money. So I was able to, you know, uh, pay the cost and, and do what I had to do, but it, it, it didn't stop me drinking. What it made me do is I, I became um, more creative in my drinking. Um, I wasn't allowed to drink and drive. Obviously that's the reason I got caught, but I had a breathalyzer in my car. So you can't drink, you can't start your car if you're, if you've been drinking. So I, um, this sounds crazy, but I got to share this because there may be somebody out there that's gone through the same thing. This sounds crazy. I would, I would plan it. That's when I really became isolated instead of going, uh, meeting people up at the club because I couldn't drive home if I was drinking at, at Applebee's or the club or whatever. So I just go home and that really isolated me. I really had nobody, just a couple of drinking buddies. And, and I would go home and I knew just how much I had it down to the millimeter, how much I could drink. And how long throughout the evening I could drink and had to quit drinking before I went to bed. I knew, I knew the timing and the, and the, um, the amount, um, that I knew I could, had to stop. So I would be able to start my car in the morning to get to work. So, um, it There's sounds a lot of crazy. People on here saying they can relate to this, and and what you're describing it was that hunger for Jesus. You'd been through so much yeah. trauma, so much brokenness. I'm sure you know just wound after wound, and that's the power of you know inner healing and deliverance. You know your soul was crying out. You know, and a lot of people on here can relate to seasons like you're describing. Right. Yeah. So um, I just was really you know, that I was just creative in in how, and and if I felt like I couldn't start my car, I had a friend who um, would come over and and could start my car for me. And it it was just, it it was crazy bananas. It was just crazy bananas. And I mean, that just goes how to show how broken I was. And uh, finally I got off of uh, probation in like 2009 uh, maybe a little after that, and I uh, really tried to clean myself up. I really tried to, um, I think it was at that time I had shared with my brother some things, and um, uh, but I really tried to clean myself up, and I had gotten fired. Actually, I back up a bit. I got fired from my job, not because I had been drinking on the job, but because um, uh, I was always late or I was having to take off or to do court dates and things like that. So I got fired from my job and long story short with that people now, you know, understand what happened and they see me now. So 
so there's a lot of people that come online that see what's happening in my life now. So wow. it's, it, it, wow. yeah. Yeah. And so I, um, I tried to clean myself up. We always try to do it on our come own. On. Why is that? Why is that? Only Jesus, I thought, right? <laughs> I thought I can stop drinking. I can stop drinking on my own. I'll get another job. I got another job. Mm. I can stop drinking. And you know, that worked for mm. about uh, maybe two months. Mm. And um, the job I was in was a little bit different. It was a pretty stressful. Of course, I'm a nurse, so most nursing jobs are very stressful and um er nursing is very stressful so once once again i um i just would fall back into that drinking pattern when i got home from work but i i was i was i knew enough not to drink and drive this time but i was still Mm -hmm. being creative and I didn't have the breathalyzer on my car anymore. So I could drink, you know, as late as I wanted, as long as I could get enough sleep before I had to get up and go to work. And so it was just never working. I went, I had been to several churches throughout this whole time period, uh, time period. And um, from the beginning, and, and I'd really pressed into God many times before even the alcohol started. And it seems like every time I would press into him and I would be getting breakthrough and I'd be in Bible study and then, you know, something would come in front and, uh-huh. and di- distract me. And typically for me, it was a relationship because okay. I was wanting to feel that in my heart. Mm. Um, and so this is what happened again after I tried cleaning myself up. Another relationship came. And, um, sadly, um, we attract those, uh, we, we, what is it, what is it the saying we attract, you know, if, if we are broken, we attract broken. Yes. Yes. And so that's what I did. And the person I got into relationship with, we never married, but we got into relationship. He was also an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. And, um, so we just fed off each other Yeah. Come on. and, Brilliant. um, but we like and to that was, familiar spirits, yeah, and deliverance. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was definitely a familiar spirit. And yeah. so it just got out of hand. And um, there's a lot of details that I really can't share with, with yeah. how that happened. But um, just to kind of get to the point, my brothers that were called and they came. Um, they drove 200, uh, 100, 200 miles and picked me up and took me um to rehab and they didn't you know i get along with my brothers we have a great relationship but we're we're not we're not the type that we talk on the phone a lot we're not we're not that close bond type relationship they had their lives i had mine they really were clueless about what was going on with me and you know our parents were deceased so they didn't really hear any, you know, they, they, yeah. we, we didn't have the get together yeah. and, and right. things like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes when the parents are deceased, the families kind of, mm-hmm. you know, kind of go their own way. That's kind of what helped happened with us. Um, I am so grateful for my brothers. They mm-hmm. came and got me. Um, and, um, they, they, they didn't know what was going on. So they didn't really even know where to take me. And they were having to check me in on a Saturday afternoon. And they were just going by recommendations from friends. They're like, where do we take her? What do we do? So they took me to a rehab in Wichita Falls, which actually turned out to be like a lockdown mental wow. institute. Wow. They didn't know that. And wow. I didn't know that until I actually got in. And that's where they come in and they, um, they take, you know, they cut off any ties off your clothes. Um, cause there's mm-hmm. a lot of people who are suicidal. I was not suicidal, but, um, I, you can't sleep. They leave the light on in your room and they come and flash it, a, a flashlight in your eyes every 15 minutes. Yeah. And, um, there, yeah. there's no, uh, you, you have a bed, but you don't have like blankets or anything. It's for precaution. And I'm thinking, I'm in the wrong place. Yeah. 
I'm thinking, I need help. I need to be in rehab, but this is not the rehab. And that I, this is, this is not, this is not where I'm supposed to be. And I just, the first night I was there, I just got down on my knees Come on. and I just totally 1000% yielded wow. to on. the Lord right there. And his, wow. that heavy, it was dark in the room, um, mm-hmm. but it was light out my window and that heavy presence. Um, and it was, and it was dark outside, but it was light out my window and that heavy presence just came upon me and that was it. I repented. I, I re rededicated, renewed just everything from that point on, although there was a process to get to where I am, um, I, I was a new person. And I was telling my friend, Wendy, it's, it's interesting because after that happened, you know, I called my brothers the next day. Um, they don't, you don't get to have your phone or anything. You have to use the public phone and you have to take turns. So you have to stand in line to use the phone. And I'm telling them, I finally get a hold of my oldest brother. And I said, Hey, you know, I know I need help. I know I need to be in a rehab, but I'm in the wrong place. And I told him some of the things that had happened. Um, I woke up with, there was a naked guy standing in my shower and it was just, it was just a lot of things happening. I said, this is not where I'm supposed to be. I need to be somewhere, but this is not it. He says, okay, we're on our way. So, um, so was they so wild me, though. That was the place that God met you. That's Even though that was not <laughs> so cool. So what the Maybe enemy meant for harm. Yeah. God, you're used for and, his good. And that's, and that's my choice. That's my signature verse. And that's the one oh. that uh, God has always downloaded to me is um, Genesis 50, 20, what the enemy oh. meant for harm. Oh, uh, God, you know, for good, for the saving amen. of any life. Yeah. <laughs> amen. So, um, so they, they came to get me on Sunday and talk to me. They understood at this point, as I did, that this wasn't the place I was supposed to be. But this place wouldn't release me because it was on a weekend. Um, and um, the doctors don't do any releasing till Monday afternoon. Mm-hmm. So um, every Monday afternoon, if, 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 and they have to, you have to be approved to be released. So they left. There's nothing they could do. And they planned coming back on Monday. So mm-hmm. I had the whole weekend. To really, um, wow. to really think on things, and um, and what's interesting after that glory of God came over me, and that weightiness okay. came over me, um, I looked different, and even though, not physically, but people in that unit, lockdown unit, saw something in me. They were all of a sudden attracted to me, and of course, I know it wasn't me. I mean, I was, I was messed up, but it was the Jesus in me that they were attracted to. They would come and and ask, I don't, they would ask what I thought about things. I mean, we had a lot of time on our hands Mm -hmm. and, and we only got to go outside for like 30 minutes and then they would escort us back up. And, and so there was a lot of time on our hands and people just kind of kept, they start coming over and sitting by me and. And I remembered the word that I'd learned from my younger years. Plus, you know, some of the trials I had experienced uh, previously, I had not forgotten the word. And I listened to, you know, ministers and, you know, I knew that God had a calling on my oh, life. Man. And uh, it's no different than anyone else. We all have a calling. I just knew, I just knew it in my heart. Yeah. So it was kind of, it was really odd that when I got checked out, some of them came up and started crying and said, I, you know, we don't want you to leave. Wow. And, um, and I just, I would be praying over people then <laughs> and not even knowing that where God was leading me, having no clue. Wow. So my brothers came and got me Monday. They took me to a ranch, um, a rehab that was located on a ranch in Waco, Texas. <laughs> and they took me and um, uh, my brother brought my Bible because he knew I'd need my Bible. And I was able to um, 
you know, have more, take more stuff with me. It can't have your phone in rehab, can't make phone calls. And, but it was on a big ranch and I could barely walk. And, um, so the rehab finally drove me into the doctor in Waco and did x-rays and he said, you need a hip replacement. You have severe degenerative arthritis. I could barely walk. So I was in this rehab, which I'm grateful for, for 31 days. And I couldn't walk. And the meetings and the uh, places to eat um, our meals were scattered all over this ranch. So they had to drive me around in a golf cart. And um, I went into, um, when I first went in, they put you in detox. Um, God had already delivered me from uh, alcoholism and the taste of it when I got to the rehab and and wake up that they put me in in detox but i didn't have to detox come on i love that (laughs) yeah and and what's interesting is um they gave me the option to move out to another room but the room rooms were upstairs and i couldn't walk and i mean i could walk but it was just kind of i couldn't take i couldn't do stairs and um they said or you can stay here but then you're going to have to hear and listen to everything that's going on in detox and it's not a pretty sight Mm -hmm. and um i had a roommate and she was definitely um uh, detoxing Mm -hmm. and um i felt i felt the spirit of the lord said you stay in detox even though they weren't, I wasn't detoxing. They weren't, in fact, being a nurse, they had me doing some blood pressures on people. So I'm in here, I'm in rehab. And, um, the favor of the Lord still working, huh? <laughs> I, yeah. And so, and so my roommate, um, I, this is when I realized, of course, at the time I didn't know it till years after, but I look back and say, you know, I've always had the discernment of spirit um i I could tell my roommate had several seizures um based on her detox when you go through detox you can have seizures she had several and had to be um um uh helicoptered to uh the hospital in waco but i could feel them when they were coming on so i would be over near her bed praying over her and then when she would have them i'd be holding her down and just praying over her And as a nurse, I knew what to do with seizures, but that happened. I just felt the spirit of the Lord tell me to stay in detox. So I stayed in detox for 31 days, um, Mm -hmm. getting the help I need, the counseling I needed. I needed it. Um, And but I was also kind of like the detox welcome wagon. Every Mm -hmm. time a new person would come in, you know, uh, they always wanted you to connect with that person and, and people say, Oh, you need to go, you need to go to Danny. She'll tell you where everything is. And, and it was just the weirdest thing. I didn't understand it at the time. <laughs> and so, um, I got out of rehab and, um, my brothers came and got me and obviously I needed surgery. I needed hip surgery. And, uh, the orthopedic surgeon that my brother connected me to said, yeah, we don't even know how you're walking. I wasn't really. And or driving. And so they scheduled me for surgery and I was scheduled and I had to go in to get, there was a series of tests I had to have run before I did that. And I had that done. I had to have anesthesia clearance and all that. So they did um, a heart test EKG and it showed up at that point that I'd had a heart attack. And, and I wasn't, I wasn't surprised. I was surprised. I was shocked, but I wasn't surprised because I remember in 2009, I had an episode and I went to an urgent care and he told me I needed to stop drinking. It's affecting my heart. Mm-hmm. And so uh, they sent me to a specialist, a cardiologist. I used to be a cardiac nurse as well. And I used to work with this cardiologist mm-hmm. and he did several tests. And he said, he even showed me and I was able to see 
the, the damage. He said, this, you know, you've had a heart attack. Wow. He says, um, we can't put you on a treadmill and I can't give you, we can't give you anesthesia surgery. They won't do surgery on you without um, cardiac clearance because I can't put you on a treadmill. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you come in and do some extensive tests. So um, I uh, drove to his office, did the test, um, went back the next, I think the results were the next week and um, went in for the results, not knowing what to expect. And um, he says, I don't know what to say, Danny. He called me Danny because that's what he knew me when he worked with me. He goes, I don't know what to say, Danny, but you saw the results too. Um, but your heart is fine and as strong as ever. <laughs> Come on. And I knew, I knew <laughs> that, where that I, came knew, from. <laughs> I knew where it came from. I knew where it came from. So that was the start of these, these feelings. So they scheduled me for surgery um, and um, uh, went in, got prepped, almost ready to enter the OR. IV was in my arm. And, um, uh, the doctor, uh, the doctor said, um, he came in and he said, you are, um, uh, having, it, you're bleeding somewhere. Your test shows that you're bleeding somewhere extensively, wow. um, like your platelet count in, in your, in your WBC, our RBCs are just off the chart, um, wow. abnormal. And so, um, yeah, I do respiratory. I was, yes, I can relate. <laughs> yeah. So wow. they um, they had to cancel the surgery and they wheeled me into a different surgery. And I was having a major GI bleed that I actually could have died from. And um, wow. yeah, and they and they uh, they fixed that up, gave me meds. The doctor told me at the time that they would reschedule the surgery, but it would probably take. Uh, approximately three months, maybe longer for the GI bleed to heal. But he wanted to see me back in a couple of weeks. And so I went back and guess what? My mm. GI bleed was, it was healed. Come it was on. healed in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so then um, it, I, I just feel like I'm dragging on is so much to this uh, glory of God. You know, it, it, it's my testimony, but it's, it's his story, powerful. his glory. Um, so many people can relate to this because, you know, what you're describing is the very reason that I do and you do like inner healing and deliverance, because all this stuff you had to walk through that was so painful. If only we would have yeah, yeah. knew to go get inner healing and deliverance. It's like, man, why didn't somebody teach us 20 years ago? No, and, nobody you know, told me. Come on. I don't even know how to have a, have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, oh. you know? And so, um, anyway, um, it's powerful. so they rescheduled me for my surgery. They did, they did some, um, extensive tests, um, before I, my surgery. They also had come back with extensive tests, even within the GI bleed. And the, the doctor had come in and said, um, you have in stage liver failure. Uh, and you're and, probably, and, oh my gosh, <laughs> at yeah, that point, and, you know. <laughs> yeah, and he said, I don't know that we can do, I don't know that we can do surgery because anesthesia, you know, drugs are filtered through yes. the liver. Yeah. And um, he said, you have end-stage liver failure. I remember my brother and my, my brother, Greg, and my sister-in-law was sitting there. My sister-in-law um, exited the room. I, I think, I, you know, I haven't had a conversation with her about that because I, I keep forgetting about it. But I think, I think she was, um, you know, just upset about everything and didn't want to show her emotions. But um, I looked at my brother and he was just, he was just like white as a sheet. And um, I looked up in the corner of the hospital room. Now, I didn't see anything with my natural eyes, but wow. I heard so loudly wow. as I was looking up there, I didn't bring you this far to drop you. Oh, I didn't bring man. you this far. So powerful. And Somebody so basically, hear that. so but basically Philippians one six, he on. is faithful to Come finish on. the good work that Come he started on. in you. Amen. And um, I'll never <laughs> I love forget that verse. That's that day. one of my favorite verses. <laughs> 
Yes. Yes. And I'll never forget that day. And my brother, um, I don't think he knew what to say or do. And I looked at my brother and I said, you know what? God has this. He didn't bring me this far to drop me now. Come on. He, he's not, a, he's not a dropping God. He's Come not, on. he's not. And I, I'll never forget telling him that. I think I mentioned that to him several years after, and I don't know if he remembered, but I, I remember it like it happened yesterday. Amen. And so um, finally, after a lot of consultation, I didn't have surgery that day, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, after a lot of consultation with the liver doctors, the anesthesiologists and everything, and I could barely walk. And I was swollen. Like my, I, was, I was carrying so much fluid in my stomach. And um, wow. I mean, I... I mean, what, what's my choice? What, what yeah. they, I, just lying in bed and dying and not being able to walk. They wow. took the chance of doing hip replacement on me, total hip replace on me. And, um, and they had like two anesthesia backup. They had a lot of backup and were just giving me the minimal anesthesia, even though I was put to sleep. And so back into surgery, back for right before surgery on another occasion, uh, the doctor's telling me, um, he goes, your hip is so bad. He says, we're taking you in. We know all the test results. Mm -hmm. We we passed all that. We're, we're going to do the surgery um, regardless. Mm -hmm. And But I'm going to tell you, your hip is so bad that there's a 95% chance that when I take you in there and get you wheeled in there, I'm going to have to break your hip mm -hmm. in order to get it out. Wow. And and I said, okay, so what does that mean? He goes, that'll be six more months of recovery. Oh and I said, yeah. I looked at him and I said, no, I hmm. said, that won't happen. Oh, my God, my God will not let that happen. Amen. So I had the surgery. I had the surgery and um, rolled out of surgery, did fine. He came out and said he didn't have to break my hip. Everything went well. Um, they were concerned during surgery because I had some labs that were really elevated. So they were calling people, calling consultations over the phone in the OR room. And, um, but everything went fine. Um, went home after three days um, and uh, started rehab, uh, physical therapy and everything. And uh, still had in stage liver failure. I mean, I, I couldn't breathe. I could hardly breathe because I was just, so bloated all the time and just so uh, it, it's just the liver was 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 dying and wow. um, um so I, of God, huh? only only God only, <laughs> only God, God I just praise oh, his God. name every day and mm -hmm. um so the 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 next thing that occurred so keep in mind that my my brother's taken me to rehab up to this point is a four month time period. Wow. Okay. So two, two, three weeks later, I think I'd been in physical therapy only two or three weeks. Probably shouldn't have been driving, but I was living in Oklahoma near my brother's. I had a, my own duplex, but I still had my house in Dallas and I hadn't been to my house in Dallas since March. And I was worried about, you know, I needed to get things done there. I needed to check on it. I had neighbors checking on it. So I decided to drive to Dallas wow. three weeks after my hip surgery. It was in <laughs> August and checked on my house wow. on the way back. Um, I, um, I, it had just started raining and in, uh, Nakona, Texas, I had a car accident Jeez. and my car just started flipping over. This is after my hip surgery over and over and over into a median. Wow. thankfully into a median because there was a huge truck coming right behind me wow. and it was smashed up pretty bad. The people that came up on me thought I was dead. Um, I had to be cut out of the car. Wow. Um, I was not dead. I, I, I was, I was all my uh, faculties were, were with me and um, the ambulance got there. They covered me up with a blanket and was just talking me through because they had to bust out windshields and cut out seats and things like that. Wow. And they were just talking to me and um, my phone had fallen in, uh, fallen out somewhere and they found it uh, just 
out of the blue, they found it. And, wow. and, um, I told them to please call my brother. I was about an hour away from where, uh, my brother lived. And so he called and they told my brother and he said, um, your sister's been in a car accident. She, um, she's doing okay, but we're, we're cutting her out of the car. We're taking her to Nakona hospital. Mm -hmm. And by the way, is your sister pregnant? And my brother's like, no, she's not pregnant. Um, she just had, she's an in stage liver failure. That's why she was so, so large. Um, her, her stomach was so large. So, um, they, they, they took me to the hospital. They did x-rays. I come out of that wreck with two bruised ribs. Wow. And, but I went back to my orthopedic surgeon, um, uh, next, the following Monday. And he said that because my surgery was so, um, new, uh, so fresh that it probably didn't have time. My hip didn't have time to adhere to the muscle. So the wreck wow. probably jarred it loose and they wouldn't know until later. They just kept doing x-rays every few weeks, every six months. And it was perfectly fine. Wow. It, it never, it Very never, I came out. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, and then that, that's middle of August, uh, four, four days after my car accident, um, I wake up and my swelling is all gone. Come Everything's on. gone. Jesus. The um, healer, right. <laughs> and this, this is the healer. I'm like, I look in the mirror, my countenance had changed. Come on. I, I think I lost like 18 pounds of fluid. Wow. Um, was it doing anything different? Um, I was like, what, what happened? <laughs> and, um, and you know, I was believing during this whole process, I've been just sharing the, the healing that I was believing. I was, I had faith that the Lord had a calling mm -hmm. on my life to heal me. And so I was believing for it. I was, I was, I, I knew, I just knew mm -hmm. in the deepest part of me, I went to my doctor, they ran tests and my test came back perfectly normal. And that's, and that's even if I just stopped and I had been stopped, I had stopped drinking obviously for several months, but due to the extent of my liver damage, it would have, it would take longer for my liver. It would have, it would have never been normal. And it, it's been normal since. So they're baffled. The doctors are still baffled. And, and um, My God, yeah. <laughs> only God, only God. Hmm. So, um, um, so that was all, all of that. That's the end of all of that. That was uh, a five month time span of uh, just healing and miracle after miracle. So and faithfulness um, in your life. What faithfulness. And yes, yes. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I just yeah. feel the presence really heavy right here. So let's just stop and, and minister to that for a second. Cause I know there's people on here and you can relate to the story that Danny's yeah. been through and maybe you are um, struggling with addiction or you're struggling with, with stress or trauma or you need a miracle. So I'm going to ask Danny to, to just pray for that spirit of addiction to be broken off of you and let her, um, just pray whatever the Holy Spirit leads and, and we're just going to let just whatever you need, receive it in the glory as <clears throat> Danny prays. And just, just like what she experienced, what you've been delivered from and what you've been healed from, you know, you can set others free from. So just get in a position where you can just receive in the glory. So go ahead, yeah. Danny. Yes, Holy Spirit, we just invite you in. Thank you. Um, just come and rest on the hearts of the people online and those who will watch the replay. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank Even on the thank podcast. You, Lord. Yeah. Yes. We just mm -hmm. thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I just I just feel like there's somebody out there um, who's in addiction, um, who's Come feeling on. rejection and fear and shame. And Come and that's on. not from God. And Come I just on. um I just want to break off the spirit of addiction, the spirit of rejection, uh, okay. shame fear yeah. um uh, we break any agreement that is not that is not in line with the word of god and who god says we are we break it off now in jesus name it is null and void lord we just we just release peace uh the mind of christ we command breakthrough lord we command breakthrough yes, yes lord we just command breakthrough over over your children lord 
those who are experiencing loss in their family, loneliness, Come on. Come on. Um, isolation. Um, they don't, they don't know where to turn. They don't have anybody to talk to. And, um, Lord, we just ask that you just come to them, Lord, and just rest upon them, Holy Spirit, and just, and just give them the peace and, and open spiritual eyes and ears and remove spiritual blinders so they can see you and encounter you, Lord. We just command turnaround now for those who experience any, any of these things. We command turn, turn around now in Jesus name. Oh, and Lord, we just declare over everybody under the sound of our voice, Lord, we just declare the gates of hell will not prevail against them in the name of Jesus, as it says in Matthew 16, 18, and who the sun sets free is free indeed. So I thank you for another level yeah. of freedom over everybody under the sound of our voice. We command confusion. We break confusion off of you yeah. right now. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to replace it with the mind of Christ. Just ask the Holy Spirit to refill you. If you felt stuff break and come off, just say, Holy Spirit, fill that place. Fill that place inside yeah. of me. Yeah. We just curse the roots of any stress or trauma or shock from just the rejection and the abandonment. We just ask you, yeah. Holy Spirit, to pull those roots out, pull those roots out. We just command yeah, it off the Lord. side of the memory right now in the name of Jesus. And just like what Danny was saying, I felt like we did, Danny, we should just pray that the word says that he will put the lonely into families. Whoa. Oh, yeah. I just feel the far. I yeah. just feel far. I'm a, I'm a strong feeler, which is just a prophetic. Um, that's a whole other teaching. But if you look it yeah. up online, prophetic filler. But I just feel the heart of God so deep to pray over families. So let's go for it. So Lord, yeah. we just declare community over the people we call yeah. them out of isolation. Yeah. We ask that you put the lowly yes, in families Lord. right now, whether yes, it's a spirit Lord. family or our, our, our marriage relationship our children. Lord, we just declare that you put the lonely in families and, and Lord, yes. even call in spiritual brothers and sisters in Christ, because in the kingdom, we're yes. all family. Yes. So surround people yes. with kingdom like-minded believers. And Lord, yes. we just break any um, generational curses for those under yes. the sound of my voice, Lord, that could be affecting their health, curses of infirmity, curses of affliction. And we just apply the blood. We apply yes. the blood and we declare victory over yes. your life right now we just repent for anywhere yes. it could fall, um anything in the bloodline and we just ask you to cleanse wash over it and with the dna yes. of jesus christ whoa and danny pray for yes. i see people getting healed um let i'm gonna let you pray for livers and anything else i just really feel the healing anointing strong right now so whatever you feel with the release just go for it yeah thank you jesus yes, Lord. thank you jesus you know what I'm what I'm really feeling. I, I'm I'm really seeing that um, there's there's somebody out there that um, um, is struggling. It, it may be alcohol addiction. It may not. It could be any type type of addiction. Come on. Come on. Um, that they're hearing they're hearing they're being told that once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Oh, wow. Or or plug in Come or plug on. in any addiction to that. Um, you know. Once a drug addict, always a drug addict. Um, uh, but that's not that's not true. And I just want to speak to you now that um, that God, when He sets you free, you are free in Christ. Jo uh, John eight thirty six says, "For whom the Son sets free, Come He on, is Lord. free indeed." Come and I really like that in the Passion Translation um, version. I don't have that pulled up, but it, it's um, it's just a matter of yielding. He wants to set you free. He wants to put you in community. He wants you to come out of isolation. Yeah. He wants to heal any, he wants to come in and heal your heart. He come wants on. to, I just see the balm of Gilead just come flowing on. over your heart, Lord. And um, thank you, Lord. We just thank you. The balm of Gilead, I just see it right now flowing over heart, healing wounds, wounded heart. Um, just call out uh, physical healing, people who need physical healing, whether it's, um, uh, livers, hearts, cancer, we just, um, we just bind up, um, every single cell of, uh, infirmity now, and we cast it out in Jesus name. Jesus. We just ask the Holy spirit just to come in and release your, your healing power, Lord, and healthy cells and, 
and, and make people whole, complete, and just just release the, the healthy cells and the uh, powerful um, healthy cells, Lord. Yes, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank I just, you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, amen. And I just, Lord, I just command creative order right now to everybody under the sound of our voice with Danny and unity. We just declare creative orders to yes. knees, creative orders to shoulders, to backs, to yes. wrists, to teeth right now. We just command creative order from the top of your head to the soles of your feet right now. We just command, um, I see yes. the Lord healing um, a gallbladder right now. In the name of Jesus, I just see the Lord healing a um, pancreas right now. I just command creative order to your pancreas right now. In the name of Jesus, yes. Whoa. we just declare yes. your blood sugar to be at normal levels right now. In the name yes, of Jesus, Whoa. I just see yes, disc Lord. and vertebrae thank going into backs right now. We just say, Lord, Amen. thank you for releasing disc and vertebrae right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I see the Lord healing migraines right now. We just command creative order to, yes. to migraines, Father. Woo. Yes, I see. I'm seeing feet. I'm seeing Lord. Somebody's got um, uh, foot issues. Um, I just see him healing feet, whatever that, I don't know who that may be, Come but on. I just see him healing feet right now Come in the on. name of Jesus. We just speak the blood over it. We plead the blood. Yeah, yeah. And Lord, every, every, every single body that's under the sound of our voice that watches the replay or watches or listens to the podcast, Lord, we break every assignment of the enemy of spiritual abortion on yes. our destiny right now. We cancel yes. that in the name of Jesus. And we just decree and declare that just like Danette said, Danny said, <laughs> your favorite verse, go ahead and say it one more time. We just declare that over them. Uh, Genesis, Genesis 50, 50, 20. 20. What Come the on. enemy means for harm, the Come Lord on. means it for good, for the saving Turn of around. many lives. Come and on. if I can just add to that, um, um, you have a purpose. I just, it's just so important for us to know that I didn't, I didn't feel I had a purpose. That God, He changed my identity. He changed my my physicality. He changed my countenance. He changed Come everything, on. and He put purpose in my hand. And I, in my hands and I ran with it. And it reminds me of uh, Psalms 130, uh, 139, 16, I think, um, where he, he knew you before you were even knitted uh -huh. in your mother's womb. He knew you, yeah. he called you out. He chose you before you were even knitted in your mother's womb. Mm -hmm. And so uh, everyone that is here and breathing and alive, has significant purpose he loves you so much and oh, you have significant purpose and mm -hmm. he's lining things up for you just if you yield and surrender to him and just say mm -hmm. this is what i said god i said god i've tried it my way for so long and that's never worked <laughs> i'm i'm giving it a I'm lot of people can relate to that <laughs> yeah i'm giving it over to you and mm -hmm. he swooped in and he took he just he just blew my mind. I can't even describe it. Even when I tell my testimony, it's just like, it still blows my mind. And, you know, even though that happened several years ago, I'm still getting downloads of revelation on that. On. He'll, he'll just speak to me on something. And I'm like, oh, you did do that too. And um, so I'm just, you know, I just speak, I just speak freedom and liberty over the people. Freedom and liberty. Thank you. Jesus Lord. name. In Jesus name. Yeah. It reminds me of that verse, Danny, what God kept speaking to me is if God be for you, who could be against you? That's Somebody right. needs to hear that. I don't know what you're going through right now, but you felt discouraged. I see the Lord. I just released the glory right now. I just released the presence. Yes. Danny, we were just released it in unity. Yeah. If God be for you, who can be against you? I just thank you yes. that the joy of the Lord is going to be your strength. The yes. wind and breath of the Holy Spirit is just going to blow over you right now. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening Thank them. You, Jesus. And I've seen you've gotten a lot of resistance and you've wanted to give up so bad. But yes. God, 
you, this Danny story is just going to relate as you watch the replay. If you didn't catch the front of it, as you, you're going to feel such a glory and anointing of God as she shared her powerful testimony and you've seen and heard how faithful God was in healing her heart and healing her body over and over again to bring total restoration one area at a time. Yeah. And I know a lot of you may have been, you may have just started your journey of restoration or you might be right in the middle of it. There, or you, you feel like you've been just going through restoration, going through restoration. But I love what Danny said about he that began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. That's right. So just, just be encouraged and allow yes. um, the Holy Spirit to minister to you. And if there's anybody that's on here and you're like, what are they talking about? What is the glory of God? What is the presence of God? It's just intimacy like Moses had with the father. You know, yes. Ezekiel 44, 4 said the glory filled the temple. And, and the New Testament, it says, 1 Corinthians 3, 16, that we are the temple, that our bodies to be filled with his glory. So we just say, Holy Spirit. We just say, just come and come and make yourself real to me. Yes. And just say, Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, say, Jesus, I believe you died on that cross. I knew like yes. Danny that, that you had a plan, even I went through similar things as Danny and I didn't know what to do, God. And I didn't know how to get breakthrough, but just say, Jesus, 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 yes. Jesus, you died for just me on that name. cross. You, you resurrect. I believe you resurrected. Come into my heart, make yourself real to me, allow yourself yes. To just, just receive all that God has for you. Allow Jesus Amen. to do the same thing that he did for Danny. Allow him to just do that for you Amen. right now. So I just thank you, Lord, for everybody under the thank sound of our you. voice. They had the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank you, oh. thank you Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. And if you haven't been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you know, the Bible says it's the evidence of speaking in tongues. Just ask him, just ask Holy Spirit. I want you, you know, coming to yeah. you. And it might sound like two syllables, two syllables, like, like a baby, yeah. right? Danny? Shake on my yeah. nut whatever yeah. you know whatever it is just allow the holy spirit to bubble up i like to display explain it danny it's like the difference in having a black and white tv and a cable tv oh that's good <laughs> Oh, that that's good? Good. yeah it's, it's just that level where it, you're building yourself up right danny it's it's just yeah, allowing yeah, it's just Come just on. let you, just let it flow. Just let it flow. If you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, He wants to do that. You just have to ask Him, and He is free to give it to all. Uh, there's, so there's no respecter of persons. And mm -hmm. and like April said, you know, sometimes it may be just a few words that come out. I know when I started, it was like baby talk, and then you know, once you continue to to um uh to get that relationship with the Holy spirit oh. and uh, cultivate that relationship. And it just, it just comes over you. He just comes over you. And, and there's power in that. That's where, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much power in that. Come on, come on. And I know I can't get off here, Danny, without asking you something about the nations, because I absolutely, you know, that's oh. part of discipleship, you know, is, is heading to the nations, you know, mm -hmm. so just share any, aspect of maybe how you encountered God in the nations, um, just to stir some people's heart up as, as their life is getting restored and maybe they're getting a little hunger to, to go okay. get out of their box. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I felt like the Lord called me back Come before on. all of this happened. Uh, but then, like I said, things kept uh, obstacles kept coming in my way. And for me, it was relationships. And so I, I felt the call in 2002 wow. uh, to go to the nations, but I didn't follow through with it. I went my own way and I didn't really know. I didn't really know uh, what, what it in, involved. I didn't, I didn't really know. And so, yes, I leaned on my own understanding, which we sometimes do sadly, but, um, uh, but when I got into the, the, the parts of my testimony where I was into really heavy drinking, I was still, I was still talking to God. Yeah. I didn't really know what to say to him because I was ashamed. I was, I was fearful. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to know God will talk to you and you can talk to God. It doesn't matter what kind of shame or fear or it. rejection you have on you. He accepts mm -hmm. you just as you are and I would even be watching 
um, ministers on TV. I remember watching Joyce Meyer Ministries and I'd be pouring my vodka. I'd be pouring my vodka and drinking my vodka and say, amen. And I'd be agreeing and declaring with her um, the promises of her over my life, even though I was still in bondage. Yeah. And um, so when I got out of that bondage and he healed me uh, oh, physically God. and um, emotionally and spiritually, I felt the call. There, he wasted no time after I was, yeah. after oh, all God. of these incidents. I heard him say, um, I, I heard him, not audibly, but I knew. Mm. He, he said, um, I want you to quit your job. He didn't say it like that, but I, I just knew I, he was leading me out of my nursing job. Not to quit maybe forever, but he wanted me to, to, to lean back and, and, and he wanted me to quit mm. doing my job. I didn't have the grace to do it anyway. He wasn't giving me the grace, so I knew it was him. And um, he wanted me to sell my house in Dallas and he wanted me to go on, um, go on mission. And so oh I, uh, I, that's when I got connected with Joyce Meyer Ministries. I said, God, uh, after he'd already done all these things, I'm still asking him questions. I said, God, how am I going to do that? Because I'm quitting my job. You're wanting me to go to another country and I have this house I'm going to sell. I don't, I mean, well, let me just tell you that I put my house up on the market and it got an offer the first week. It wow. sold the second week <laughs> and, and it brought a cash buyer. So we closed in, in two and a half weeks wow. and I was off to El Salvador. Wow. That's when you know. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. I love so that. Since then, I've been to um, roughly, I think, 13, 14 different nations. Come on. Yeah. So. And, and you and God, just like you said, for many under the sound of our voice, you have a call to go to the yeah. nations and, and just be encouraged, you know, it, it, like you said, it, it, God, a lot of times will give you one step and you'll be obedient to that. And he'll give you the second step. Then you be obedient yes. to that. And then you gives you the third step. So whatever he, he tells you to do after getting off this podcast, just be faithful. And I love to see what God is now birthing in Danny and what he's pouring out of her and the breaker anointing that she carries for these very things that she's had victory over. She didn't give up, you know, and that's what I want to say. I just want to release hope over everybody yes. in the sound of our voice that he is faithful, just like yes. Danny you're called, you know, you have a purpose. You ha he has yes, a plan yes. for you, just like Danny. And, and she's taken it one step at a time and she wasn't perfect. And none of us are, and that's not what God is, expects. But the thing that I love about Danny's testimony is she just kept going. You just knew, you just knew that God had a plan. And I'm telling you, when you get to that point, when you know that God has a plan, we just want to say, just find that scripture. And even if you're on here right now and you're at that point, right this very second, I want you to take that Matthew 16, 18 verse as soon as we get off this broadcast and post it around the house. And I'm telling you, you speak the word and God is going to make a way from you that the mm -hmm. gates of hell will not prevail against you. Whoa. Yes. Yes. And I had, a, I had basically, when I lived in Oklahoma, um, I, um, that's where I was, God drew me away for five years. And, um, I lived there for five years and three months and, uh, it was just, uh, I was going to the nations, but I was, he was teaching me in the prophetic and he was healing my heart and, mm -hmm. and doing all kinds of work, um, all kinds of work. And I had my, basically my little duplex was a war room. So I had, on, I had I um, <laughs> verses posted all over my house. And um, you just need to, you know, decree and declare those things. Um, another verse is Jeremiah 29, 11, where I know the plans yes. I have for you. And um, just a decree and declare. And um, uh, you are so worthy. Whoever is out there that's hearing this, you are so, so worthy and you matter. And you have a purpose or you wouldn't be here on this earth. Yeah, come on. And I'm going to let you go ahead and break any like shame or fear. Yeah, I just want to break off, Lord. We just come to you. We just ask you to, any of those who are, are feeling um, isolated and they feel they feel 
fear, afraid to let go. They don't know what they don't maybe have anyone in their life or they or they or people that don't understand, Lord. We just break that fear off of them. Anybody who's um Maybe, uh, maybe even watching this broadcast now in in, in, yeah. in in deep addiction, Lord, we just break off that shame. You are worthy. God says you are worthy. You are worthy. And um, he has called you. He has called you his son and daughter of the most uh-huh. high king. And we just break, we just break agreement with, with any, any rejection and um, any rejection that uh, you may feel, there's a lot of re- rejection that people feel in the midst of addiction. And, and um, God does not reject you. He does not reject you. We just break that off. Yeah. That's not from God. If you're feeling rejection or fear and shame, that is not from God. That's from the enemy. He wants to keep taking you out. He wants to keep taking. He wanted to keep taking me out. Mm-hmm. And um, he kept trying. He kept giving it his best shot. It said, but God said, no, she is mine. And he's telling you the same thing. He's telling you, he's telling that you are mine. You are mine and you are worthy. So I just break any fear, rejection, shame off now in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. We just declare and decree Isaiah 54, 17. Come on. You are worthy. Yes, you matter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord. You just released that spirit of a adoption over everybody under the sound of our voice that you just give them the revelation as a son and a daughter yes yes <laughs> to just heal yes. their identity lord we just declare that you heal their identity and lord we just activate dreams lord discerning of spirits whatever i freely have yes. i just freely give right now yes you just impart it in Jesus' name for their assignment to bring the breakthrough. And Danny, if there's anything you feel led to impart, thank you, Jesus. Go for we it. We just, we just, I just have keep hearing all morning. I think I shared with that with you earlier. I just keep hearing freedom. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, freedom. Um, um, where the spirit of the Lord is, oh, um, there is freedom. And so yeah. I just, we just release freedom over. Uh-huh over all the people we release we just command turnarounds right now yes come on but, um, the hearts. whole hearts yes. whole heart whole <laughs> hearts in jesus name thank jesus thank you jesus man the glory is really heavy <laughs> yes so lord i just we yes. just released the glory for a few more minutes i'm i want to make sure i honor danny's time but we're just going to release the glory for a few more minutes so if there's anything you need in the glory um, go after we get off glory stories, go set with the presence of God. There's no formula to get in the glory, but it's just yeah. about hearing her story, allowing God to touch you, allowing the intimacy and healing the, t- the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Yeah. You know? So yeah. she, she prophesied to you in your season, just by sharing the testimony of Jesus and Lord, I just pray for people's boldness to move forward. We just break all yes. hindrances and delayed any sabotage yes. right now. Yes. Any Amen. assassination right now. We just break oh, it in oh, Jesus oh, name. Oh, we just declare that they have boldness oh, like a lion, that they will oh, move yeah, forward oh, in the gifts and callings oh, right now. Right now. And you know, sometimes you just have to prophesy to yourself. Ain't that right, Danny? That is right. That come is on. right. You just take just, your scriptures um, out. Yeah, come on. Yes, take your scriptures out. You are a daughter or son of the most high king. You're ahead and not the tell. You are above and not beneath. You are the lender and not the borrower. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Thank just get you. out those words. Post them on your on your around your house. I don't know what your situation is. But I do know that the enemy, you've got a great call in your life, a heavy call. We all do. And the enemy wants nothing more than to keep you isolated and to keep you stuck in the pit and possibly even kill you. John 10, 10 says the enemy comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But Christ comes to give life and life in abundance. And so um, just know that that his schemes are... um, are cunning and um that christ greater is he like april said earlier greater is he who is in us than he, he who is in the world 
Come on. And he's the victor. And I just speak victory. Come on. Victory and redemption over everybody in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we just come against any double mindedness right now, Lord. I think you're just axing root systems to call double mindedness. And instead, Lord, we just decree and declare right now under everybody under the sound of our voice, people are coming back into right minds. Right now that they have the mind of Christ, we speak the word over them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, there's a few people that just logged on, so you'll have to watch the replay and hear Danny's powerful testimony and and uh just go get in the presence. I want to honor Danny's time and thank her so much for coming on. Tell people where they can where they can just follow you, um, keep up with what you're doing, because I know God is birthing so much inside of you. Um, right now, I am just on Facebook and Instagram, and it's uh, okay. Danette, oh, you there. Danette Danny Shepherd. Yeah. Um, Come on. So that's that's what it is right now. Um, I know that he's birthing some things in me, and he's leading me to perhaps do some other things. But right now, that's that's really that's really where I'm at. They can you can just go ahead and add her and watch what God does over the next year. I'm so excited for Danny and. I'm so thankful that you were willing to come on Glory Stories and share how Jesus Thank changed you. your life. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. It's all God's uh, glory. Like I said, it's my testimony, but it's His story, His glory. So it's all about you. Come on. But uh, I want to say goodbye to everybody. And me and Danny say, go get the glory because it's all about Him. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's all about Papa. So just... Uh, we love you guys, and we just say be blessed. Yeah, but just bless you. And everybody, that is another glory story for you. So I would just like to challenge you on the different things that you heard my guest talk about on the glory today to just get alone with God and ask Him to help you cultivate His presence in your everyday life and see what kind of glory story that God wants you to be a part of.